Hi, I'm Mordechai Becher. Welcome to Jewish Broadcasting Service, Dimensions of the Duff, in which we uh, deal with a different issue in Jewish law, Talmud, philosophy, etc. every week, generally Duff, which means a folio of the Talmud. Uh, and we try to base ourselves on the Talmud, but I, 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 I do uh, admittedly deviate from that sometimes, and we uh, look a little further afield sometimes to things of interest. So today, uh, we're looking actually at some correspondence of one of the greatest Jewish scholars that ever lived, uh, Moses Maimonides, Rav Moshe ben Maimon, born in Spain, lived there for 16 years until he and his family were driven out by a Muslim Almohad invasion uh, and uh, the or Almohad takeover, and then they went to Morocco, from Morocco to Israel, Israel to uh, Cairo, and eventually he settled in Cairo, Egypt, in the suburb of Fostat. And uh, the, so he corresponded people, he became very quickly uh, a very famous figure in the Jewish world. He was a leader of the Jews. He was a, uh, a scholar who taught uh, philosophy and Talmud and Jewish law, and he codified Jewish law, and he made it really uh, accessible to everyone. Uh, and uh, so he's, a lot of his famous works, we have the Mishnah Torah, which is complete codification of all of Jewish law in beautiful, very modern, simple, elegant Hebrew uh, called Mishneh Torah. Of course, one of his famous works is the Guide for the Perplexed, Moreh Hanavuchim Dalalat Al Ha'irin in Arabic. It was written in Arabic, uh, which is a, a Jewish philosophy. Fascinating, fascinating book of philosophy. He wrote a commentary on the Mishnah uh, uh, to elucidate it for everyone. He wrote books on uh, mathematics, logic, uh, medicine. He was a physician. And also, there's a lot of correspondence. And uh, fortunately, we have, this is just one of about a few volumes of his correspondence, uh, and mostly not personal letters. I'd feel a little guilty about that, but mostly they were, they were um, questions that people asked him about Jewish law, Jewish philosophy, etc. Communities uh, wrote to him. He wrote back to entire communities. And uh, fascinating to, to, to see. Now, most of his letters were written in Arabic, which is the language that most Jews spoke uh, at the time, uh, but some are in Hebrew, and the letter I'm looking at is actually uh, a, a part of a group of three letters written as a response to a, a fellow by the name of Ovadia. Ovadia was an Arab who had converted, a Muslim Arab who had converted to Judaism, not a uh, not a simple thing at the time. In fact, uh, there were certain areas of the Muslim world where if you converted from Islam to either Judaism or Christianity, that was an automatic death sentence. There was another convert from Italy at the time of Maimonides, known by the name of Ovadia also, who uh, he converted to Judaism in Italy, which again, keeping in mind in the medieval times, converting to Judaism, a Christian converting to Judaism was usually a capital crime. That was true until about the uh, 18th century, actually, in a lot of places in Europe. Uh, where a Christian would be killed uh, if he converted to Judaism. Uh, so Ovadia uh, from Italy also had to escape, and he went to Aleppo in Syria and from there to Cairo. Uh, the Ovadia we're talking about is a Muslim who converted to Judaism, and uh, he writes three questions to Maimonides. Oh, I should, uh, forgot to point out, Ovadia was a popular name for converts for two reasons. Ovadia is Hebrew, uh, and it actually is really a combination of two words. Oved, which means serve or servant of, to serve. Ka, ya, yud, hey, which is God's name. So Ovadja means servant of God. So it's a very beautiful name. And for another reason, it was a name popularly uh, used by male converts because the original Ovadja, uh, which I think, I don't know, I guess in America you pronounce it Obadiah or Obadiah, I don't know how. But Ovadja, the original Ovadja, who is one of the books of the Torah, the Tanakh, uh, uh, of uh, is actually was a, was a convert himself. So he was a prophet of Vajja, who has a book of the prophets named after him because it's his prophecies. He was actually a convert from the nation of Edom. So therefore, here you have a prophet who is a convert himself, and Ovadja means servant of God, so it became a name that numerous converts, uh, Gerai Tzedek, righteous converts to Judaism, used for themselves. So anyway, that's a little background. So uh, Ovadia writes to Maimonides, and the first question he writes, which I've, you can see here, Maimonides, first of all, says, I received the questions of the master and teacher Ovadia. He calls him Marana Varabana, master and teacher, which is a title of great respect, especially if it's coming from the greatest rabbi of the time. 
a perceptive and thoughtful righteous convert. Uh, and by the way, uh, another introduction is that Maimonides uh, writes these letters in Hebrew. Most of his letters were in Arabic. Here he writes in Hebrew, and I think the uh, Yitzhak Shilat, who is one of the great translators, is one of the great translators and scholars of Maimonides, he suggests that Maimonides was using Hebrew as a way of saying to Avadja that he is one of us. Even though Avadja himself was an Arab, so his native language was Arabic, most Jews spoke Arabic, but here he has converted from Islam to Judaism, so Maimonides is, I guess, opening his arms to him and writing to him in the language of the Jews, not the language that most Jews spoke, but the authentic Jewish language, which is Hebrew. So it's a way of saying, um, uh, you know, being receptive and welcoming and loving to Ovadja, writing to him in Hebrew uh, itself. So then Maimonides goes on saying, May God reward his actions. May his payment be from cl complete from God, the Lord of Israel, under whose wings he has come to seek refuge. That's actually a paraphrase of a verse in the book of Ruth. Of course, Ruth was one of the most famous converts to Judaism. She uh, was a Moabite who converted to Judaism. She married Boaz, and her great-grandson was none other than King David. So David, king of Israel, ancestor of the uh, Davidic uh, lineage, and, of course, the Messiah who will be descended from King David. Uh, king David's great-grandmother was uh, Ruth, a... Um, a convert to Judaism. So uh, that phrase, may God reward the, your actions and may your payment be complete from God under whose wings you have come to seek refuge is actually a verse from the book of Ruth that was said to Ruth, this early righteous convert. So Maimonides is starting with a very beautiful greeting, giving him a title of rabbi, master, teacher, perceptive and thoughtful and asking that God should reward him. And now he tells us the fir first question. Um, Regarding prayers and blessings, you ask whether you are praying by yourself or together with the community, if you should say, our God and the God of our fathers. We start the silent prayer, which is the central part of Jewish prayer, with the statement, Elokeinu, Elokeinu, our God and God of our fathers. So here, Ovadji is saying, well, can I say that? He wasn't the God of my ancestors. Um, most my ancestors not identify with him. Uh, he has sanctified us with his commandments. He says, well, or for example, who is God who has chosen us. Or for example, he gave us this as a heritage. Well, he didn't give it to me. I wasn't at Sinai. My ancestors were not at Sinai. Can I say, for example, so many of our prayers refer to the fact that God took us out of Egypt. He says, he didn't take my ancestors out of Egypt. Uh, so, uh, or for example, Shasanissim Hanukkah. We light the Hanukkah candles. We say, Blessed are you, O God, who did miracles for our forefathers. He said, so here Avadja says, I feel that it would be dishonest to say these prayers because it wasn't my ancestors who were in Egypt. My ancestors were not saved from the Greeks at the time of the Hanukkah, the Maccabean revolt. Uh, you didn't give my ancestors the land of Israel. Uh, I'm not a child or a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. So can I say these things? And his question is both, you know, communally, if he's, if he's praying with a group of Jews, or even by himself, can I say these things? It's an interesting question, uh, because think about it, a convert. You, you go to Seder, Passover Seder, and the whole Seder is all about our ancestors were in Egypt, and our ancestors are this, and our ancestors are that. And I, I guess he must feel a little left out. Can he say this? Does he have to sit there and say, your ancestors? Can Ovadia stand there in the silent prayer and say, my God of the God of my fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Can he say that? Or does he have to say, my God and the God of these people's ancestors? It's uncomfortable. What is he supposed to do? So Maimonides answers. He says, you should say all of these phrases as they are. Don't change anything. Rather, as every Jew recite, every other Jew recites the prayers and blessings, so should you, whether you are praying alone or as a leader of communal prayers. And Maimonides is saying you don't have to, let's say, do one thing in public so you're not changing from what everyone's doing, and then in private say it their fathers. No. Whether it's in private or in public, whether you are leading the prayers or participating in the prayers, you should say exactly what every other Jew says. Why? 
I mean, strictly speaking, if you wanted to be a stickler, he's saying a statement which is not true. So Maimonides gives a few reasons. A, he says the main principle here is that Abraham, our father, taught everyone. He educated and enlightened them about the way of truth and the unity of Holy My blessed be he. He says Abraham was not only focused on his own son and his own children. Abraham, we know, Abraham and Sarah taught everyone they could about monotheism. They taught about the Torah. They taught about a relationship with God. He says, and he rejected idolatry and the worship of idols and brought many people under the wings of the divine presence, teaching and, and enlightening them. Furthermore, he commanded his children and, and this is crucial, and the members of his household to guard the way of God. As the Torah says, I loved him. God says regarding Abraham, I loved him because he commands his children and his household after him. That they should keep the way of God. So you notice when the Torah speaks about Abraham, it talks about his commanding not only his children, but in the Hebrew, b'nei beto. That means the members of his household. So now Maimonides says this on the next screen. Therefore, anyone who converts till the end of all generations, anyone who declares the unity of the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, that he believes in monotheism, according to that which is written in the Torah, he is a student of Abraham our father and a member of his household. He says, first of all, in the Torah itself, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the covenants that God made with Abraham, were made not only with him and his children, but with the members of his household. God's blessings to Abraham were not only to Abraham and his children, but were to the members of his household. Who does, to whom does this refer? B'nai Vator, members of his household. So Maimonides says, It is he who returned all of them to the path of goodness, just as he brought back to his own generation. With his speeches and teachings, so too he brought back all those who would convert in future through the legacy that he commanded his children and his household. He says, you, Ovadja, you never met Abraham, but Abraham brought you back and brought you into his household. He didn't do it personally, he did it through his descendants. So there's a Jewish people who lives and exists and teaches the principles of Abraham. When you've become part of these people, it's as though we are Abraham's agents and we're bringing you into our household. He says, so now you are a member of the household of Abraham. Therefore, Abraham is our father and is the father of his righteous descendants who walk in his ways. And he's also the father of his students, i.e. everyone who converts. He says, so Abraham's your father like he is ours. He is our father genealogically. And he's your father ideologically. So you too, he says, are a descendant of Abraham. You are a member of his household. All the blessings, the covenants, the commandments, the verses in the Torah, God's statements, prophecies, and so on and so forth apply to Abraham and all who he brought into his tent. You are now in the tent of Abraham. Therefore... You may say, our God and the God of our fathers, because Abraham is your father. You may say, you gave as an inheritance this land of Israel to our fathers, because the land was given to Abraham. As a state, arise, walk through the land, its length and breadth, because to you I'll give it. So, interesting. Number one point that he makes is that this convert is a descendant of Abraham through Abraham's ideology, through Abraham's teaching. And technically, he is included in all those statements in, the Gen in Genesis, in the Torah, that talk about B'nai Beso, meaning the members of his household. However, regarding you took us out of Egypt, you did miracles for our fathers, if you feel uncomfortable, you'd like to change these and say you took Israel out of Egypt and you did miracles for Israel, you may. Because you might feel a little awkward saying, okay, Abra Abraham, totally. What about the fact that you took us out of Egypt? He says, if you want to change those, you can. But if you do not change anything at all from the norm, there is no harm. Why? He says, okay, the whole Abraham thing, we understand. But what about saying my ancestors came out of Egypt? They didn't. So Maimonides says the following. Once you've entered under the wings of the divine presence and attached yourself to God, there is no difference between us and you. All the miracles that were performed, it's as though they were done for us and you too. Isaiah says, 
let us not let not the foreigner who has joined himself to God say God will utterly separate from his people. There is no difference between you and us in any matter. Certainly you should say the blessings who has chosen us, who has given us the Torah and who has separated us because the Holy One, God, has chosen you, separated you from the nations and given you the Torah. So he says a second point. The first point we understand, child of Abraham, ideologically, if not genealogically, part of the covenant of Abraham because it was given to his children and the members of his household. But now he's saying a second idea which is that once you've entered into the nation of the Jewish people, you've entered into a covenant with God under the wings of the divine presence, so to speak, then you are part of that group called the Jewish people. So everything that God said about the Jews applies to you. Everything that God did to the Jews applies to you as well. And, and he quotes a verse which actually appears many times in the Torah, for the congregation, the same rule shall apply for you and the convert who joins. In, he- in Hebrew, what it says is, Kachem ka Ezrach. Ezrach vahager chuka achat yelachem. Ezrach is Hebrew for a native born citizen, a native born Jew. Ger means a convert. And numerous times the Torah tells us that the law shall be same for the native born Jew and for the convert. So he says clearly, the Torah is saying that there's no difference. There'll be one Torah, one law for you and the convert who joins. So, very clearly, his second argument is that once you become part of the Jewish nation and the Torah itself says you're not allowed to, there is no distinction between the Jew and the convert. He says, therefore, you are free to pray exactly as any other Jew prays uh, because you are now an intrinsic part of that Jewish nation. And the Torah explicitly states that there shall be one law and one Torah for the, for the native-born Jew and for the convert. No distinction. And... He now comes to a third point on the next screen, probably, I think. In addition, he says, you should be aware that most of the ancestors, our ancestors who came out of Egypt, were actually idol worshippers in Egypt. They assimilated amongst the nations, learned from their ways, and then God sent Moses to extract the Jews from there, separate them from the Egyptians, brought us under the wings of the divine presence, and gave us the Torah. So his, his point here is that all Jews, in a sense, are converts or descended from converts because those original Jewish people who were in Egypt, we were not necessarily all monotheists. We were idolaters. We were heavily into Egyptian culture. And so he says, and, every, and then Moses was sent by God to take these Jews out of Egypt. And when we came to Mount Sinai, we really converted to Judaism and to monotheism. He says, so... He says, ultimately, we're all converts or descended from converts because the Jews that came out of Egypt, so to speak, converted. And later on, he points out that all the laws of conversion are actually derived from Mount Sinai and the experience of Sinai. And I think we discussed this in a previous class, which probably is found in our archives at Jewish Broadcasting Service. And he says the following. Then he adds, moreover, don't take your genealogy lightly. Although we trace our ancestry back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you trace yourself back to the Creator who spoke and created the world. He says, huh? Genealogy? Don't worry about it. Yes, we have human ancestors, but you have a divine ancestor, God. Meaning, you have attached yourself to Him, so you're like a child of God. And he says, so we can trace ourselves back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we're all very proud of that. He says, He says, you should be no less proud of tracing yourself back to the creator who spoke and created the world. This is explicit in Isaiah. This one will say, I am God. The other will call himself by the name of Jacob. So who calls themselves by the name of Jacob? The Jewish people, native born Jews. And who calls themselves under the name of God? The convert. He says, so don't take it lightly, my friend. He says, you've got yichus, which is a term in Hebrew, which means genealogical pride and descent, etc. He says, is no greater for a native-born Jew than for you. He then goes through, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but he goes through a discussion actually in Bikurim, because Bikurim, which are the first fruits in Israel, the, uh, when you have your first fruits of the land, you bring them to the temple, and there's a whole declaration which is recited when you offer these first fruits in the temple. And in that declaration you say i bring the first fruits of the land that god promised to my fathers so there's a discussion in the mission as to whether a 
convert can say that. So the opinion mentioned in the Mishnah, as we see it, is that the convert should say the God of the fathers of Israel gave that land to them. He should say the God of your fathers. So that's the opinion in the Mishnah. But Maimonides points out, that's the opinion of Reb Meir, which is an anonymous opinion in the Mishnah. But he says, but if you look in the Jerusalem Talmud, which Maimonides often follows the Jerusalem Talmud, the Jerusalem Talmud says that it was taught in the name of Rabbi Yehuda that the convert himself brings the Kibikurim, the first fruits, and reads the declaration exactly as every other Jew. Why, he says, using the first piece of logic that Maimonides used, which is Abraham was the father of a multitude of nations and of many converts, and consequently the, the uh, convert can recite the declaration the same as any other Jew. And he says... Uh, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said that the law is in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda, that the convert can say it like any other Jew. And a case of this sort actually came before Rabbi Vau and he ruled in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda. Generally, when you have a theoretical ruling, that's one thing. But when a case actually came before someone in the Talmud and he says, yes, I'm ruling like Rabbi Yehuda, that's, that's very... Um, that's considered to be more authoritative because it was a practical case where he ruled in accordance with this opinion. So Maimonides now brings some sources. First of all, he brought a number of logical arguments that the, the convert should say exactly what every other Jew says. He's a descendant of Abraham. He's in the house of Abraham. Uh, uh, the, the Torah says he's part of the Jewish people, so there's one law for the Jew and the convert, the native Jew and the convert, and he brings also the logic that all Jews anyway were converts at Mount Sinai, so you're descended from... So we're all descended from a sense people who, who, who uh, separated themselves from the Egyptians and idolatry and converted at Mount Sinai. And then um, finally, he now brings a halachic or a legal argument from a Mishnah, from a Talmud in your, the Jerusalem Talmud, uh, in which uh, we rule in accordance with the view of Rabbi Yehuda that a convert, not only does he bring the first fruits to the temple, but he is allowed to say the declaration as any other Jew would say, which involves saying, my ancestors were given this land. You promised this to my, you gave this to my ancestors. And he's allowed to say that. And he also brings a ruling in the Talmud in accordance with that view. And finally, he ends with a paragraph. It should therefore be clear to you that you should say that God promised our fathers because Abraham is a father to us and to all righteous people who join with God and walk in his ways. This holds true for all other blessings and prayers as well. Do not change a thing. So Maimonides concludes with, and it's a very beautiful letter, and you sometimes when you see it in the original Hebrew, it, just, uh, it is full of uh, love and sensitivity to this Ovadja and putting his mind at ease because he was bothered by this and understandably he's an intellectually honest guy and he feels that how can he pray to God and say something which is not correct not his ancestors Maimonides explains to him it is your ancestors he says you are part of the Jewish people all Jews ultimately are converts at one time or other in history whether it was at Mount Sinai or later on in history like yourself the Torah itself declares that there shall be one statute and one Torah for the native born and for the convert there's no difference between you and us. And he says all the blessings that were said to Abraham were said to not only his children, but to the descendants of his household, members of his household, of which you are one. And he says this beautiful uh, phrase that, uh, let not your genealogy, let not your genealogy be light in your eye, light or, or uh, nothing in your eyes. Yes, we're descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you are descended from God himself. And that's how he concludes with the statement that you should not change anything at all. Say all the blessings like every other Jew uh, in history. Uh, so this is... Um, uh, this is Maimonides' letter, his first letter to Avadji the convert. And uh, this is Mordechai Becher with the Jewish Broadcasting Service. If you are interested uh, in my book, uh, so you can actually, there are people still out there who read. Uh, if not, it's a very convenient size to put your monitor on. Uh, it's Gateway to Judaism, published by Art Scroll, available on Amazon and other uh, booksellers. And uh, Mordechai Becher, Gateway to Judaism. So, anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Jewish Broadcasting Service, Dimensions of the Duff, Mordechai Becher. Thank you.
We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.